Let's do this uh, Heisenberg uncertainty principle problem. It says the velocity of an electron in a hydrogen atom is 2.2 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. If we assume that the velocity is known to within 10 percent, then what is the uncertainty in the electron's position within the hydrogen atom? Okay, so um, in order to do this, you have to remember uh, some of these formulas, okay? So the first thing you're going to be looking for um, is the um, uncertainty in the velocity, okay? So um, they give you the uncertainty in the measurement, they say it's 10%, okay? So the uncertainty in the velocity is just going to be um, the measurement uncertainty times the velocity itself, okay? And what we're going to be figuring out is the minimum uh, um, uncertainty in position. That's why we're setting everything equal. So if you look back in the book, it'll always, it'll give you these um, greater than, less than signs. So don't worry about that, okay? So here, so this measurement uncertainty, it's not a percentage, it's that ratio. So we're gonna have to divide that by 100%. So we get that, okay? Times 2.2 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So um, I can do that in my head, thankfully. So 2.2 times 10 to the 5th meters per second, okay? So now, because we're looking for eventually the uncertainty in the position. We don't know what that is. But in order to figure out that, we need to figure out the uncertainty in the momentum first, okay? It told us, or I have to give you the mass of the electron. It told us we we're working with an electron. Electron's masses are uh, 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms, okay? So you're going to want to have these uh, numbers in, or units in kilograms, okay? So what does that mean? Well, what you'll find, well, let's just go with this, okay? We'll see when Planck's constant comes, we're going to have to do some conversions of units, okay? So let's figure out the momentum now, okay? So the momentum equation, you remember that? Mass. Velocity. Yeah, the, it's the uncertainty in the velocity, okay? And that's what we just found up here, okay? The mass, remember, has to be in kilograms. So, sweet, we got it in kilograms, okay? So, Okay, so when I do this to two sig figs, it's 2.0 times 10 to the negative 25 kilogram meters per second. Is that what you got? Oh, uh, sorry. That's all right. Is that what you got? Okay. <laughs> Just play at him. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. Um, so, anyways, now we found the momentum. We're going to have to remember our last formula that we're going to use for the uncertainty measurement. Okay. Do you happen to remember that formula? Um, yes, yes. So let's let's write it out together. Change it. X yeah. equals what's on the top? Um, H. H. And then. Four pi. 4 pi change in momentum, okay? But in the book, it's not like that. Uh, yeah, so they might say mass times uncertainty. Is um, change in x times change in p 
um, greater than or equal to. Yeah, this is the same. Like I said, we're not using the greater than or equal to. Okay? So this, we're doing the minimum uncertainty, which is all you really need to do. Okay? So then all we just do is plug and chug. Okay? So um, since we're kind of falling off the edge here, I'm going to erase this part and then just write it in here, okay? Is that fine? Did you write this stuff down? You got it? Okay, wonderful. So I'm going to just write these numbers down so I don't forget them. So I guess I don't need this one. Anymore, but. Okay. So I'm going to erase this now. We're going to do the uncertainty in X now. Okay, so in order to do this, we're going to have to have Planck's constant, which is given to us. 6.636 times 10 to the negative 34th joules seconds. Okay? So notice that's in joules, right? Well, we're going to have to convert joules to the kilogram meter squared per second squared, okay? So if you recall, right, let's just write that over here. One joule equals one kilogram meter squared or one second squared, like that, okay? But I like to just equate these two things and say, put the second squared up here, okay? So multiply both sides by second squared. So we're going to have one joule second squared equals kilogram meter squared. It'll make it easier on us, okay? So, well, let's just plug in. So 6.636 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds, like that. Okay, but we want to convert our joules, right? So let's use that conversion there. One joule second squared, one kilogram meter squared, like that. Okay? At the bottom, four pi, and then multiplied by our momentum. Okay? So what do we have? 2.0 times 10 to the negative 25th kilogram meters per one second, like that, okay? So why did I do it this way? So I could cancel out all my units, okay? So remember, this is change in position. So position, that's gonna be like a length or something, okay? So hopefully we get meters if we're, when we're done, okay? So let's cancel our units. Joules cancels with joules. Seconds cancels with one of the two seconds, right? Um, kilograms cancels with kilograms. Meters cancels with one of the two meters. Seconds cancels with the other seconds. We're left with meters, okay? So that's good because that's what we wanted for the units of position, okay? So And what I get is 2.6, because it's the two sig figs, times 10 to the negative 10 meters. But let's put this in picometers, so it'll be uh, units that are a number that kind of, you know, looks nice, okay? So um, remember, for every one meter, there's... 1 times 10 to the 12th picometers, okay? So meter canceled with meter. So what do we get? 260 picometers. So that would be the uncertainty in the position of this electron, okay? So just go through those um, steps. The uh, 
probably the biggest problem will be to remember those formulas. So. Mm -hmm. Any questions on this? Okay, wonderful.